Oi, fala aí pessoal, bom dia. Você está escutando o inglês do inglês do rádio. I am your host, Foster Hodge. This is your daily dose of English. Hey, Alexia. Hey, Foster. How are you doing? I know that everyone has missed you very much. <laughs> yes, I got a lot of messages on Instagram saying um, meus sentimentos. So thank you all for that. And in English, we should say I'm so sorry for your loss, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think the most direct translation for meus sentimentos would be my condolences. Yeah. It's like a very formal way to say that I'm sorry. But honestly, for me, it's too formal. I would not say like, oh, my deepest condolences. I would just say I'm really sorry for your loss. Yeah, that's it. So thank you, everyone. And I am back on track. I'm here And we today have a very important subject to talk, right? Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to say real quick that our fans are the best. So sweet. <laughs> But yeah, today is January 21st, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Which means here in the Happy anniversary. Yes, <laughs> it's our monthly anniversary which Alexia constantly reminds me of, but I think there's... I like some... it. I like it. It's so not anything like big, but I like it. I like to remember. Uh, oh, I like it too. But I don't think it's more important than Martin <laughs> Luther King Day, which is the topic at hand. Depends on the point of view. It depends on the point of view. No. <laughs> no. I mean, it's not even our yearly anniversary. I think any <laughs> objective person would say that Martin Luther King is more important than our, <laughs> I don't even know what anniversary it is. <laughs> of course, a more, a more, I always say that, of course, a more. A more. <laughs> okay, so Alexia, how would you like to do this? Would you like me just to talk about Martin Luther King or... I think a good place to start would be if you could just tell me, like, what is the brief description of what you know about Martin Luther King? Because from what I understand, most people outside of the United States really don't know who Martin Luther King Jr. is, why he's important, that kind of thing. Um, well, honestly, I don't remember if I studied that in school. I have no idea if I did or not. But once you grow up, you kind of start understanding the world and what happened. So you start to learn that Martin Luther King was an activist, a very important activist against the racism in the United States, in the world. So, yeah. I'd say against the racist or i would probably just say against racism okay yeah yeah i think that's pretty pretty much perfect for like a general definition of what most people know i think martin when people think about martin luther king jr they think a civil rights activist and then they think about his famous i have a dream speech yes that's true yeah So before we get to his most famous speech... And can I say one thing? Absolutely, go for it. M most of people don't really know who he is and what he has had done, what have done. Had done. <laughs> oh my I God. I would just say what he did. What he did for the United States. And they only like share on Facebook or Instagram the I have a dream speech just to be hype, you know? So people really, really don't know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. And I would include 
a lot a lot of Americans into that category as well. I can't imagine. Yeah. So let me ask you some uh, quick little trivia question. I, I, I don't know. I, I just <laughs> go ahead. No one I knows know. this, but I think you can guess and I will give you some hints. So do you know where Martin Luther King was born? And I will give you a hint. It is a city in the U.S. that you have visited. Charleston. It's a city in the U.S. where you consistently have some bad memories or annoying situations. Atlanta. Yes, MLK <laughs> was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I always think about the, I'm like, why is the airport in Atlanta not named after Martin Luther King? And then I think, uh, What's yeah. the name of the, the Atlanta airport? Hartfield International. Who's this person? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know if it's a person. No. Nah. Might be like a company or something. Really not sure. But then I was thinking, probably a good thing because everyone hates that airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't like it. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. So let's just talk about some of the important things that Martin Luther King Jr. Um, so that is his full name, is Martin Luther King Jr. Most people in the U.S., a lot of times when we are talking about him, we just refer to him as MLK. Mm -hmm. But you say like MLK. Yeah. Never knew about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so some of the reasons that he's really famous, um, primarily for his civil rights leadership and activism, but something that a lot of people at least a lot of our listeners probably don't know, is that he was first and foremost a minister. Um, do you remember the David Letterman that we watched? I think it was the Obama episode or the Drake, no, the Jay-Z episode. I don't remember. <laughs> And there was one guest that was interviewed. John Lewis. Uh, Yes. Yes. So John Lewis is a United States congressman who is still alive. And he was one of the leaders, along with Martin Luther King Jr., in the march in Selma, Alabama, against segregation and police brutality. And it's awesome because he's still alive. <laughs> He's almost like 95 years old. Yeah, and still serving in the government. He's It's amazing. Guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> But anyway. Okay, uh, so Martin Luther King was a minister? Yeah, which is, I think it's really, really important because, first of all, Was a minister from the government or minister from a church? Because it's minister. No, no. Yeah, we don't really say minister for, um, yeah, we don't use that as much for government. Um, no, I'm talking about of a church. I believe he was a Methodist minister. That might be mistaken. He might have actually been a Lutheran minister. But yeah, he would be a Catholic version of a priest, but for not, he's not a Catholic, right? <laughs> But I think this is really important. On one hand, that is where he learned a lot of his oratory skills, how to be a great speaker. If you listen to the old speeches from MLK, he's just a brilliant speaker. He's like a captivating, you know, you know, when you had a really motivating priest or something, they just have a way to really get your attention and make you believe in things. Yeah. And he had that capacity. Which he is was a leader. Yeah. And also the fact that he was a minister really put him in a position of power to kind of bridge the gap between white America and black America, because, you know, all of white America in this point, they were also Christians. And he would always start from a point of connection like, hey, I'm a Christian, I'm a minister. And he would talk about the teachings of Jesus to connect people rather than 
divide them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, the world is still divided like this. Yep. But we're going to stay positive today. <laughs> so another big thing that Martin Luther King was really, really an advocate of was nonviolent protest. And this is, there's a fascinating history behind all of this. But in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, and even a little bit till today, there was a lot of tension, racial tension in the U.S. And particularly in the 60s, a lot of this was about segregation, right? Like black people had to go to different bathrooms. They couldn't eat in certain restaurants. They had to go to different schools. And a lot of African-Americans in the U.S. wanted to, to like fight fire with fire, you know? They were really getting physically and just emotionally abused and they wanted to fight back. And he was the leader that was like, nope, we're just going to march. We're going to walk. Going to be like Gandhi. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that everyone has the right to protest against whatever cause they want. Right. And it doesn't have to involve violence at all. I see all the protests and the marches in France, in Paris, and it's always like a civil war. And it's horrible. People get killed because of that. Yeah. I think it's a very courageous and difficult thing to do, nonviolent protests, because you're probably going to have violence um, against you. <laughs> and it's really hard to... Or even in your group, someone is carrying, I don't know, something that it can explode you know like the person is very angry and he can't handle himself and how can you trust someone who's walking by your side yeah it's very very hard yeah absolutely so speaking of nonviolent protest the most famous thing that mlk is known for is in 1963 they had the march on washington do you know anything about that? No. Okay. So 1963, I don't know how many people, I want to say millions, but that's probably not right. But let's say hundreds of thousands of people from all over the country all walked to Washington, D.C. And Martin Luther King gave a speech. And it was a very, very long speech. But the part that everyone remembers is, I have a dream. Yeah. Um, can I read it? Yeah. So just one thing. He actually says, I have a dream like 20 times in the speech, but there is one little paragraph or one expression that he says that kind of became the most famous part that everyone remembers him for. And yeah, we can maybe put the audio in after, but Alexia, let's hear you read it and I will... See if your pronunciation and intonation is as good as Dr. Martin Luther King's. Of course it won't. Why was a doctor? Um, it's a good question. I don't know if I would imagine he had like a doctor, a doctorate in theology. Doctorate in theology. It's with the teeth, right? Theology, yeah. Ah, theology. Entendi de dentista. No. <laughs> no, I don't think <laughs> on the side, he had a little side business of, had a small <laughs> practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here he goes. I have a dream that my four little like children... Oh. You got to start. I have a dream. No, I'm, Mohan, I'm <laughs> sorry. I won't do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in, the, in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, by the, but by the content of their character. Excellent. Excellent. Really good job. Um, I think I just have probably one correction that I would make. And this is a, mis a word that I hear you um, mispronounce with some regularity is the word dream dream 
Yeah. So a lot of times when you're talking, I see this with our students all the time, that any word in English that has the E sound, but we write it with an E-A, for example, in dream or beach or seat or heat, subconsciously something in your brain is telling you, I should say tria and try to put a little A sound in there. But it's not. It's just an E sound, just like in Portuguese, like E my saga coisa. So dream. Dream. Much better. Okay. Dream. Much better. So do you want to try it one time repeating with me? Mm-hmm. Okay. I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. And I'm all tired. <laughs> That my four little children. That my four little children. Will one day live in a nation. Will one day live in a nation. Where they will not be judged. Where they will not be judged. By the color of their skin. By the color of their skin. But by the content of their character. But by the content of their character. Excellent. Excellent. The last recommendation I would make is in content. That is actually the ah sound, just like prato, chato, ka, content. Content. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. So what do you think about this, Alexia? I think it's a beautiful dream that that's the most beautiful thing that you could ask for your children is they're not going to be judged by external circumstances, but they will be judged on their character, if they're good people yes. or not. Yes, and this is a good link for a movie that I watched this past week, which is Wonder, in Portuguese is Extraordinário. It's about a little, guy, a little boy who was born with um, facial... Um, He was born with a, a facial disease, mm -hmm. like not fully formed. And I mean, I don't know how to say this in English. That's why I make my point about having to learn medical stuff <laughs> to talk about it in English. But everyone was judging him because of that. And he's a, a very healthy boy. He could walk, he could talk, he could learn, he could do anything that other boys could do. And that's it. We should not judge anyone by their appearance, by their skin color, by wh why, where they are from or anything like that. So the character is what really matters. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys want to learn... A little bit more about this, especially about John Lewis, what we were talking about earlier. There is a great movie called Selma, which refers to the march in Selma, Alabama. Okie dokie. I think that we did our job for today. Yeah. Last thing I'd mention is that Martin Luther King Day, January 21st, is a federal holiday, which means... Um, that federal workers and most employees do not have to go to work. So yes, they're really not working. They're not working. <laughs> they are not working. <laughs> not funny. <laughs> yes, it is. You will be laughing until you get to the U.S. in the airport <laughs> and TSA is not going <laughs> I hope that they are doing their job, but not that much. Okay, Emma. I will let you go and we will be back on air tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye.